you might expect Randy LaJoy to take the plunge into the NASCAR Winston Cup Series, but he's happy where he is, leading the points, five wins, and of course, he's the defending Bush Series champion, but his best finish here is a third. Tonight, he leads a 42-car field to the green flag. Randy LaJoy is on the pole for the Food City 250, which is just about to begin. Bobby LaFonte blow by the cars on the restart. Got McLaughlin, got another car. Well, now trying to get Michael Walker. Well, that's Michael Walker, but and LaJoy's got a problem. He's up high, out of the groove. LaJoy, the point. Right rear, right, right, right rear, they think. But he can't get down. All the cars come by, he can't get, get down. down. Cameron. Bill Weber. Crew scrambling, you heard the call, flat right rear. LaJoy's gonna try and work his way back here. Almost something identical to last year. Early front of Bill LaJoy. Ryan LaFoy, go, buddy. While he tries to get down. Do what you can. Right, right in front of him. Right in front of him, there's a big play. Outside. Take it. A huge collection of cars over in turn two. You heard the spotter say, trouble, trouble. And Todd Bodine, the guy in second place, fourth, was in that wreck. I don't know how much damage, but he also he was in the crash. Well, he is down and away. Here's Jason Keller, Slim Jim's champion. He's got damage on both the front and the rear. He was involved as most of the cars have pulled away. Now I can see him coming down pit road. So Randy LaJoy will be down pit road. He'll also only be able to get two tires. They want him to be smooth here on pit road because you have to get your tires so they can get back out and catch up to the field because you don't want to get lapped here under yellow. Easy to do under green and you have to be cautious under yellow. They go around to the right side. Remember LaJoy thought he had a flat right rear. Place cars in three, got right plenty of time. Tires. Now they are going to try and do all four. Well, this is surprising. Meanwhile, Todd Bodine also back in. He's going to get his left side turn four. He's right behind LaJoy. Left side's going on LaJoy. Left side's going on Bodine. Bodine is down. LaJoy down. They'll both take it out. Both take okay, 74, you beat the 36 out. You got one to go this time by, so catch up fast as you can, buddy. That's Bill Bum going to the spot. Okay, I think I'm back. Slash no, tire's going. And Look at Chuck Jones was the quickest car that time by. Well, LaJoy up there at 116.333 oh, is gaining on the Jimmy Spencer. I'm sorry, I missed him. Yes, LaJoy, the quick car. And they're still quick. And way, way back down there, Steve Park had a good lap at 116.354. Jimmy Spencer, the car number 20, is our leader. The 74 car, LaJoy in second. And that time by LaJoy, still fast. As Bill Weber, the 74 car, is coming in a hurry. And that's the test that Jimmy Spencer didn't want to have to face. His crew had told him just a few laps ago, nobody on new tires can catch you. But that's because the 78 car is holding up the 74 and he's in the But now LaJoy is beginning to reel in Spencer. More spoiler when he pits. LaJoy consistently the fastest car here so far tonight. Remember, he has been at once. Spencer has not. He did tell us too earlier he was just taking it easy. Now he's kind of even faster than that. There's our split fire snapshot on Randy LaJoy, our point leader. And Led 46 laps, started on the pole, currently being shown in second spot, was down as far as 30 on lap 52, following a cut rear tire. Clear. Buckshot Jones, we talked about Matt Kenseth, now Buckshot goes by. And you pointed out how fast he was there, and a, a couple of times he got faster than the other cars. Look at him move up on Todd Bodine. Veteran Ricky Pearson is the crew chief for Buckshot Jones in the Aquafresh Pontiac. They really gained in the pits a moment. They came in in 24th position, came out of the pits on that caution flag in 8th spot. So, great pit work for Buckshot. Oh, contact. Doesn't take much here. Good thing you hit him on the straightaway just before the contact. Yeah, got plenty of time now. I think that was Ricky Pearson telling me he has plenty of time. Oh, and Todd Bodine just moves over and says, go ahead. And that is the fourth position. And Buckshot has it on the outside. Clear. And now kids up on the outside. They're all around you. Good smooth. Just set your rhythm now. Good smooth. Set your rhythm. Six that caution flag lasting five laps. There's our leader, the car number 74, Randy LaJoy. 
How about Buckshot Jones and the Aquafresh Pontiac? He is coming on to us. His car is very, very fast. You can see how close he has moved in on Randy LaJoy now, but catching and passing are two different things. Elton Sawyer back in third. Matt Kent's a fourth, 10 feet to a fifth. Remember, Jimmy Spencer in the car number 20 had made his pit stop now. That's why you don't see Spencer in the top 10 if you just uh, were away for a moment. But he's in 12th, so that one. There's still 22 cars on the lead lap, so to, uh, to be in, in, now he's moved up to 11th, so Jimmy Spencer on the way back towards the front. And that's one reason he did. He stayed out as long as he did, Ned, just to, because he knew cars would be eliminated. As we got a battle for the right. lead. Buckshot Jones going for the lead and takes it. Good and smooth. All right, Buckshot Jones only led one race in 1997. He led 32 laps at Milwaukee, but he had never led at Bristol until just then. A moment ago, here's Jimmy Spencer. Looking on your inside, looking on the car. You're clear. You're clear. Oh, he goes down on the apron of the racetrack. Good save by Spencer. Clear all around. Got one looking. He's there on the inside. Inside, inside. There's a double zero. Buckshot Jones. There's Elton Sawyer. Oh, contact the door. Oh, no. no. Oh, no. Elton Sawyer. Wreck on the front straight away. Wreck on the front straight away. Okay, you ran over something. Hopefully you're okay. And boy, heavy impact. Elton Sawyer gets hit, gets the outside wall, the inside wall. And now he again ends up against the inside wall. Heavy contact in the Barbasol Ford. And, and you know. And the double zero, the, the car that made contact is going to have some damage to the rear of the car. Buckshot, I, I hate to get up that drive position. Well, when there's Elton coming out of the car. Man, oh man, that what a tough, tough break for that young man. I think we will. Keep the car the same way it is right now. We're good to go. Will you get back up through this traffic? I'm just afraid everybody else is going to pit. We ain't going to make it. We got 100 laps to go. Do you want to pit or not? That's what I'm saying. Yes, I want to pit. Hey, Buckshot said I didn't want to give up the position. Ricky Pearson said... Right, pit right open. Oh. No, pit road is not open. You see the guy waving the, the, just the red flag down on the inside. Red Don't flag is just very low. Cross flag. All right, there is Buckshot, the leader in the pits, the Aqua Fresh Pontiac, Ricky Pearson and crew. Eddie Pearson there is a 74 of LaJoy. They will make an adjustment on that car. Check it on Buckshot. He is down on the way, 22.4 seconds. Buckshot comes down pit road. We see him making the chassis adjustment. Loosen that 74 car up. Here comes Buckshot. Here comes the 34. It's McLaughlin. Go, 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 go. It's McLaughlin, Buckshot, then Randy LaJoy, and then Mark Green. 44 car of Bobby Labonte. All right, about seven car lengths. And Buckshot Jones back there working on the back bumper of LaJoy. Takes a look from contact. And Buckshot takes that spot away. That is fourth spot. Oh, contact around goes Buckshot. Hey, it's funny, him, guys. Drove down there and spun him out. So contact and Buckshot gets the car refired. And that will bring out caution number. Can you get it going? It's killed. It's certainly injured very badly if it's not killed. Boy, what a tough break. Buckshot's Pontiac Grand Prix. Heavy, heavy contact. One of the fastest cars here tonight. It really was a great race car tonight. Look at how that left rear is wrapped around the tire. Man, it is killed, Buckshot. Buckshot take a dive at LaJoy going in the third corner. I'm sure he's upset and mad. He's not very smart to do that. But. All right, well, there's what's left of Buckshot's Pontiac. Let's see if we can see uh, what happened in the initial incident. Well, this is the this is the crash where Buckshot gets goes in the corner and around he goes. 
back across the racetrack. Several cars very lucky to miss him, and obviously it was a little contact going down in the corner. Let's try it from the camera from the uh, onboard camp, the Penzoil Copter Cam. There we see the contact right there in the head. Right there, just as they start into the turn. And it doesn't take much. As you start into the turn, you're decelerating a little bit, and around he goes. Tough break. He had just taken the fourth position away. Is now gone. All right, let's put your car right down through here. All right, and here's the second contact. We're showing that bumper dragon, and uh, Buckshot sees the 74 car coming to the outside, and tried to miss, tried to get in, hit the 94, the 74 car. I guess he didn't make a little bit of contact, or I guess that was LaJoy avoided trying to avoid him. I don't know. Did he hit him there in the back leg, you think? I don't know. Boy, the crowd is going wild as they push the actual press Pontiac down pit road. That's left of it. Well, he had a great run going, Buckshot in the Aqua Fresh Pontiac as they head down the pit road. And they are going to push it right by LaJoy's pit. LaJoy, the 74 pit, is the very end pit. They're about six pits away, and they will turn in right by that pit as the NASCAR officials are up there between the crews. Here comes Ricky Pearson, Eddie Pearson, and the rest of the Aqua Fresh team. The right side of your screen, those guys in the blue, that is the LaJoy pit. And they stand and watch as this team comes by. And one official pointing the finger at Buckshot. They didn't do it wrong there. And just pushed it right on him behind the wall. Ricky Pearson talking to Chip Warren. Chip, Chip's going down to your car. Tempers flaring here in the late laps as Buckshot had just passed the LaJoy car. And there's Buckshot out of the car. And they're trying to cool off a little bit. And some of the PR people there trying to be able to talk to Buckshot to try to get him to calm down a little bit. And it's got to be frustrating for a driver who's run this hard, this long. Here's where it all started. As you come off the second corner, there we can see just a little contact when Buckshot gets in the back of LaJoy. So LaJoy gives him the spot. They go in the third corner. Buckshot takes the spot away. Now they come down the front stretch, across the start finish line, and right here, the 74 gets in the back of the double zero and spins him into the wall. Well, those are great pictures from our Penzoil Copter Cam. Great shots. What a perfect angle from above. You can see all the nudging taking place. Let's check in with Kyle Petty. I'm standing here with Buckshot. You had a great car all evening. From the time they dropped the green flag until you backed it in the wall up here, you had a great car. You run a great race. They knew you were here. What happened there at the end? You know, in Bristol, it's always tight race, and you're going to bump into people. And, you know, I bumped in that 34 earlier, and I accidentally spun him, and I hated that because, I mean, I get along with Mike. He's, he had a great car, and I hate to put anybody out, but, you know, we were faster than Randy, and Randy slipped a little bit up off the tar, and I've been following behind him the whole time, following him, and he just slipped up, and I barely touched him. They got him a little loose, and he, we go down to this turn right here, and he dumps us, you know, kind of like you did at Talladega. And, you know, I don't know what the problem is with him. I guess he don't like when I run up beside him or something. But, you know, I've not spun him. He's spun me twice now, so I don't know what we need to do. Well, there you have it. You saw it on film, and now you know what he's got to say about it. Well, I'm standing here with Randy LaJoy. Here at ESPN, we like to present both sides of an issue. We've talked to, um, to Buckshot over there a minute ago about what went on in those last few laps. What did you see from where you were at? I was trying to get the 20 car, and those cats in front of me, uh, Buckshot had a good car, we had a good car, and, uh, you know, it's like in traffic down the highway, you know, I mean, these guys in front of me, he got a run, I let him go, and uh, going into one, everybody checked up, and I got in the back of them, I mean, it's just short track racing at Bristol, I hated that it happened, uh, you know, it's pretty much the same thing that happened in the 34 car, I mean, I was following Buckshot in the 34 car, and all of a sudden the 34 car took off, I'm not sure where, he didn't even spin out the last 10 laps, but I think he might have got a little help, and it's Bristol, man, what happens, this is racing. I think they pretty much both said the same thing. It's Bristol. 
Everything happens fast at Bristol. Fast laps, fast pit stops, fast tire changes, and fast refueling. This is what helps refuel the car quick. You've got two cans. They each hold 11 gallons apiece. That's 22 gallons. The car holds 21, 22, 20-something. 20 if you watch some of these races, these guys run forever, so I'm not really sure. But what happens is this boat's onto the gas can right here. When they put it up next to the car, this piece retracts like this. It lets the fuel flow out around this. This is specially designed for fluid flow, so it doesn't, it's not a hindrance for it. It lets it flow. Okay, I got my hands full here. Sorry about that. All right, this piece is in the car. This piece engages, okay? It lets it flow through this neck. This is a specially designed piece also that allows it to come into and basically just suck the gas out of the can. You should be able to dump two of these cans in about 10 and a half or 11 seconds, according to my... Oh, no, no, that's Michael. Don't pay attention. <laughs> he knows absolutely nothing about refueling. Here you go. Hold on. He can be the male. Never mind. I'm not going down that road either. So what I'm saying is, the other piece that's real important to this is the overflow piece, which is not here. The most important piece is the gas guy. Michael's going to be a gas guy as soon as I get through doing this right now in a minute, guys. Hey. No. Don't do that on TV. Don't go there. Don't All fit right. those two guys together. Oh, get those guys apart. Send the police. Help somebody.